day everyone. We are the group to report this and we will discuss our topic it is all about ethical teaching of Plato. Plato is perhaps the most influential philosopher of all time and he is widely regarded as the first true systematic thinker in Western intellectual culture. No less mind than the esteemed British mathematician and philosopher Alfred Norton was swift that the sacred characterization of the European philosophical tradition is that it consists of a series of footnotes to Plato. While this is a a slight explanation, it is nevertheless true that Plato is the originator of several high scholarly ideas in Western philosophy, including the longest book branch of ethical philosophical thought, which the realm of ideals is also called the realm of forms. It asserts that the physical realms is only a shadow or image of the true reality. It explores the ultimate structure of reality and questions what reality actually is as opposed to what it appears to be. Plato came to conclude that everything in our world is only a copy of a perfect form existing in a realm attainable to us only through contemplation. Plato believed that the physical world is not the real world. Instead, he believes that the real world exists beyond our physical world. It is an idea of thing that actually exists. They represent what each individual thing is supposed to be like in order for it to be that specific thing. For example, the form of human shows qualities <clears throat> one must have in order to be human. It is a depiction of, a, of the idea of humanist in order for it to become a world. It basically needs something that would represent that certain individual or would complete it. And there are good sa realm of forms. Si Plato daw, para sa iya ha, <clears throat> ang tinood nga reality kay, nasa ato ang utok, like, <clears throat> di ba, ah, um, perfect man good sa atong, ato ang utok. Ang sa realm of forms kay, mura siya, uh, copy lang ba? Na di ba nakabutang diriya na our world, our, our world is only a copy of a perfect form existing in a realm attainable to us only through contemplation. Para sa iya, ang nadri sa earth kay temporary lang. Mawala lang ba? Kay ang tinood ng reality nasa ato ang main moto siya ga exist ang reality sa ato ang main there are two domains of reality the ideal and the phenomenal the human body in the platonic philosophy falls under the domain of phenomenal world for obvious reasons it is the material and changeable it has a definite purpose or it is theological and also destructible the human soul on the contrary, falls under the domain of idea or the ideal world. Plato believed that the reality is not found through the senses. Phenomenon is the perception of an object when we recognize through our senses. Plato believed that phenomena are fragile and weak forms of reality and they do not represent 
an object's true sense, true essence. The senses are not trustworthy. Plato believes that there was a higher realm of existence, accessible only through using your intellect to go beyond your senses. Hello, my name is Vivian Esposado and for today, I will be discussing to you the ethical teaching of Plato in which he drew the idea that the man's soul has divided into three parts, which is the rational soul, appetitive, and the spirited soul. According to Plato, the appetitive part of the soul is the one that is accountable for effortless cravings like desire to, our, to over feed. The desire for essential things should be limited by the other sections of the soul, while illegitimate desires ought to be limited entirely by the other elements of the soul. The rational soul, on the other hand, is the thinking element in every human being, which is decided what is factual and merely of views, judges what is factual and what is untrue, and intelligently makes sensible decisions. So, for being rational, we know what is right or wrong, we're doing good things in which, in a way, we know it that is good, and we're avoiding things which is bad. Finally, the spirited soul produces the desires that love, victory, and honor. In just soul, the spirit acts as the implementer of the rational soul, making sure that the rules of reasons are adhered to. Emotions like indignation and anger are the impacts of disappointments of the spirit. And that is the three parts of a man's soul according to Plato. Good day everyone, I am Daniela G. Katiguan and this day I will go in to report the ethical teaching of Plato. In his ethical teaching, Plato developed the concept that the life of reason. This includes the rational soul and from the word rational soul is the happiest and the best form of life. And why rational soul is the happiest and the best form of life? First because First, because to each person, the rational soul is one of the important aspects to be seen in man because the element of thought in each person, which decide what is realistic and only of use example around us. Through the rational soul is we are having focuses with the other visible element. The rational soul can be called the happiest and the best form of life because it judges what is realistic and what is not true and intelligently make reasonable decisions. Knowledge, function, and rational soul make us balance so the rational soul has it become the function of rational soul because it has in the rational. Energetic and loving parts, the rational part correspond to guardians because it performs an executive function in a soul. Example, it's closed in the city. And reason established a balance because this rules passion, that example of the immortal aspect of the human being, that which give individually and her humanity is often considered synonymous with the mind as the human. And in the desire, this is the rational desire for what is a good, just is rational part of the soul, and desire, please, pleasure, and pains are directed toward physical object and arise from the changes in bodily aspect. A harmonious man is a morally birthed man who is a rationally, biologically, and emotionally balanced. For example of this, when a harmonious man is a moral person who is a rational, biologically, and emotional balanced, he is a rational in the matter around and can think of different perspective or ideas of realization and this also has a rational example in feeling and desire in life and so on. According to Plato, man is soul using a bodily body and catch part of the soul has a definite locus in the body and man can use to have a domain idea, rational, biological, 
biologically and emotionally balanced. If one man wants to be happy, one should be a harmonious man, a man of virtue. Example of this is a man's life is that if a man wants to be happy, a man must be a well-to-do man with the virtue of being rational, biologically, and emotionally balanced in himself to be a harmonious man and self-balanced. Because example, in humans, in human, in human life, when there is no a man of virtue is a life is not balanced and and harmonious man to be happy. And that's all. Thank you. Good day everyone. I am Charmaine Masopa. Today I will discuss my topic about Plato in his ethics speaks of four basic virtues. Plato in his ethics speaks of four basic virtues which are wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. Wisdom arises in the original soul, courage in the spiritual soul, and temperance in the appetitive soul. Of all these virtues, it is wisdom that rules over other virtues just as the original soul overrules the other levels of the soul in men, because wisdom rules its direct courage. Her Plato must have been hinting at courage, dictate, or intellectual courage and temperance. For Plato, temperance means moderation. Now, justice can only came to the fore. There is a balance among wisdom, courage, temperance. According to Plato, justice means the observance of duty and righteousness. These four are called cardinal virtues. From the Latin word for hinge, all other virtues hinge on these four that includes lesser virtues, which are the corollaries of these, and also greater virtues. The four theological virtues which are the power of this. These four cardinal virtues are not the only virtues or the even the highest ones. As Einstein surfaced Newton, Jesus most certainly surfaced Plato. But just as Einstein did not contradict Newton but included him, presupposed him and built in him. So Jesus suffered natural virtues do not contradict Plato's natural virtues but first of all them. Plato gives us virtuous grammar. Jesus gives us virtuous poetry. So now let's proceed to the Plato's beliefs on ethics. I am Kiana Kashli Edi Guzman and I will discuss my topic it is all about virtue ethics. Contemporary philosophers still disagree on what exactly the term ethics means. Many such philosophers today consider ethical language to be nothing more than a moral fiction. Nevertheless, the general consensus in the field diverges among three major branches. The three major branches are conceptualism, deontologicalism, and virtue ethics. The first two are rel the relative recent ideas, but virtue ethics has been around since the time of Plato. And virtue ethics is focuses on the idea that what we call good is not defined on the actions we take. So, for example, is nakagawa tayo ng isang actions na hindi kaaya kaaya. Kaaya aya, it means hindi na tayo magiging mabuting tao. So, ang good is hindi ito nakadefend sa ating actions. So, it will be defend kung sino tayo. If we are responsible student, if we are honest, marami tayong mga ethics sa ating sarili na nais natin ipahayag. So, i-express kung sino ba tayo. For example, is, is, so, next is, Conceptualism. Ang conceptualism is focuses in the person that we are. Kung sino talaga tayo. For example, is tayo ay tayo ay isang magbuting tao, mabait. 
And may respeto sa ating kapwa. May respeto sa nakakatanda. And sometimes we are the stubborn or mainitin ang ulo. Is pinapakita natin kung sino tayo in the way na makikiinteract tayo sa ibang tao. Pinapakita natin kung sino o ano tayo. Ano tayo? If tayo, for example na din, is if tayo is makachos, is pinapakita natin na tayo ay makachos. For example, nagsisimba tayo, nagsali tayo sa mga, sa mga gathering sa simbahan, mga youth fellowship, mga, um, mga Bible studies, small group, and at iba pa. So, ang last is itong deontologicalism. Itong deontologicalism naman is na the result of those actions. Kung baka, resulta ng ating mga actions. For example, dahil sa gipit, is gipit at nakakasakit yung isa, yung anak mo. So, ano yung gagawin mo? So, wala ka namang trabaho. So, ang ang gagawin mo lang way is magnakaw. So, in that way, para ma makabili ka ng, ng gamot sa iyong anak is nakagawa ka ng masama. So, nagnakaw ka. So, yung consequences ng action mo either is makulong ka or makulong ka or yung anak mo naman ay ay may mangyari namang masama sa iyong anak. So, so either na so, either na na nagawin mo yung mabuti is maging ko na wala ka namang wala ka namang uh, wala ka namang gamot ay pambili ng gamot sa iyong pagingin. So, ang ginawa mo lang way is magnakaw. Every action to take is merong consequences. Either it is good or either it is bad. So, ako, uh, uh, this is the the Mm. Plato talks about what he is always mean for us to think of an ideal person. So, si Plato is nagsasalita siya tungkol sa sa tungkol sa isang mabuti. So, so ang mabuti is mag-isip daw tayo ng isang ideal good person. So, ano ba yung ideal good person natin? Di ba ang ideal good person natin is yung mabait, makajos, masinorin, may pangarap sa buhay, at iba pa. He always means for in this way, Plato would agree wholeheartedly with the basic idea of the what would Jesus do? Moments in the focus is on what a good person is rather than what good citizens or good consequences are. That's all. Thank you. For Plato, ethics comes down to two basic things, eudaimonia and arat. The ideal individual is the individual who has eudaimonia. In the field of morals, is generally only a depiction of what such an ideal individual would generally be like. Be that as it may, accomplishing eudaimonia requires a bonus, which Plato calls a rat or greatness. Having a rat is the way that one can arrive at a condition of eudaimonia. An individual with a rat is an individual who has a person characteristics that would prompt a eudaimonious life. Assuming given sufficient opportunity, the arrangement of ideals will assist anybody with becoming eudaimonious. The vast majority of Plato's works about moral centers around what a rat is, with the possibility that on the off chance that one can sort that out, then eudaimonia will trail closely. Plato's earliest thoughts on a rat rotate around the inquiry whether every positive person attribute we could name would be a piece of a rat. For instance, his boldness part of a rat certainly along these lines. Plato contends since we would scarcely call a weak in the verse life with a monious. Notwithstanding, perhaps mental fortitude is just an impact of a new demonious life and not a reason. Questions like this plagued the early Plato, yet by his central period, he appears to have settled on a rat being just an adulterated information. Information on all things is significant, however, none, none is a higher priority than in and information and information self, which Plato views as a definitive temperance and an important part of person to accomplish eudaimonia. Maybe incredibly to present-day perusers, 
Plato additionally incorporates a few different things as important circumstances for eudaimonia including karma and abundance. Plato's evolving views. According to Plato, the demiurge creates a living and intelligent universe because life is better than non-life and intelligent life is better than mere life. Or, no, uh, ang organismo ay ang posisyon na ang universo ay maayos at buhay katulad ng isang organismo. Ayon kay Plato, ang Plimurge ay lumikha ng isang buhay at matalinong universe dahil ang buhay ay mas mahusay kaysa sa walang buhay at matalinong buhay ay mas mahusay kaysa sa simpleng buhay. Good morning everyone, I'm Kulipa Nuria Nikam and today I will discuss the conclusion of Plato. So, in the conclusion, masasabi natin na si Plato siya yung bumuo sa isang universal o tinatawag na ganap sa teoryang etikal tulad ni Socrates na kanyang master. Ang platonic ethics, ito yung isang ganap na teoryang etikal kasi para sa kanya, nabibilang sa ideya ang virtud at kalaman. Kasi yung virtud, makikita niya bilang likas at ang kalaman ay bilang ganap, ganap universal at layunin. So, in this bian, we can say na para kasi kay Plato, ang batas moral ay universal at ganap kasi yung virtud at kalaman ito yung isang bahagi ng batas moral. So, dito, sinasabi na si Plato na ang pagkakaisa ng ating katutubong interes upang makita, umalaman, upang linangin, ang pagmamahal ay ugnay ang sarili sa paggalaw ng bakitang mundo dahil kasi daw dito raw natin mahahanap yung tunay na lugar natin sa komunidad ng panipunang grupo at then sumasali sa isang harmony kung saan dito ang pagkakaiba ng init ng ulo at mapasailalim sa responsable na control all access ay pinagbabawal at dito ma-insure natin na the good ay sumasailalim sa katotohanan na panalunan by examination at experience Athens, 2,400 years ago. It's a compact place. Only about a quarter of a million people live here. There are fine baths, theatres, temples, shopping arcades and gymnasiums. It's warm for more than half the year. This is also home to the world's first true and probably greatest philosopher, Plato. Born into a prominent and wealthy family in the city, Plato devoted his life to one goal, helping people to reach a state of what he termed eudaimonia, or fulfillment. Plato is often confused with Socrates. Socrates was an older friend who taught Plato a lot but didn't write any books. Plato wrote lots of them, 36, all dialogues, beautifully crafted scripts of imaginary discussions in which Socrates is always allotted a starring role, among them the Republic, the Symposium, the Laws, the Mino and the Apology. Plato had four big ideas for making life more fulfilled. First big idea, think more. We rarely give ourselves time to think carefully and logically about our lives and how to lead them. Sometimes we just go along with what the Greeks called doxa, or popular opinions. In the 36 books he wrote, Plato showed this common sense to be riddled with errors, prejudice and superstition. Fame is great, follow your heart, money is the key to a good life. The problem is, popular opinions edge us towards the wrong values, careers and relationships. Plato's answer is, know yourself. It means doing a special kind of therapy, philosophy. Subjecting your ideas to examination rather than acting on impulse. If you strengthen your self-knowledge, you don't get so pulled around by feelings. Plato compared the role of our feelings to being dragged dangerously along by a group of wild horses. In honor of his mentor and friend Socrates, this kind of examination is called a Socratic discussion. 
you can have it with yourself or ideally with another person who isn't trying to catch you out but wants to help you clarify your own ideas. Second big idea, let your lover change you. That sounds weird if you think that love means finding someone who wants you just the way you are. In a symposium, Plato's play about a dinner party where a group of friends drink too much and get talking about love, sex and relationships, Plato says, true love is admiration. In other words, the person you need to get together with should have very good qualities, which you yourself lack. Let's say they should be really brave or organized or warm and sincere. By getting close to this person, you can become a little like they are. The right person for us helps us grow to our full potential. For Plato, in a good relationship, a couple shouldn't love each other exactly as they are right now. They should be committed to educating each other and to enduring the stormy passages this inevitably involves. Each person should want to seduce the other into becoming a better version of themselves. 3. Decode the message of beauty. Everyone pretty much likes beautiful things, but Plato was the first to ask why do we like them? He found a fascinating reason. Beautiful objects are whispering important truths to us about the good life. We find things beautiful when we unconsciously sense in them qualities we need but are missing in our lives. Gentleness, harmony, balance, peace, strength. Beautiful objects therefore have a really important function. They help to educate our souls. Ugliness is a serious matter too. It parades dangerous and damaged characteristics in front of us. It makes it harder to be wise, kind and calm. Plato sees art as therapeutic. It's the duty of poets and painters and nowadays novelists, TV producers and designers to help us to live good lives. 4. Reform society. Plato spent a lot of time thinking how the government and society should ideally be. He was the world's first utopian thinker. In this, he was inspired by Athens' great rival, Sparta. This was a city-sized machine for turning out great soldiers. Everything the Spartans did, how they raised their children, how their economy was organized, whom they admired, how they had sex, what they ate, was tailored to that one goal. And Sparta was hugely successful from a military point of view. But that wasn't Plato's concern. He wanted to know, how could a society get better at producing not military power, but fulfilled people? In his book, The Republic, Plato identifies a number of changes that should be made. Athenian society was very focused on the rich, like the louche aristocrat Alcibiades and sports celebrities like the boxer Milo of Croton. Plato wasn't impressed. It really matters who we admire, because celebrities influence our outlook, ideas and conduct, and bad heroes give glamour to flaws of character. Plato therefore wanted to give Athens new celebrities, replacing the current crop with ideally wise and good people he called guardians, models for everyone's good development. These people would be distinguished by their record of public service, their modesty and simple habits, their dislike of the limelight, and their wide and deep experience. They would be the most honoured and admired people in society. He also wanted to end democracy in Athens. He wasn't crazy. He just observed how few people think properly before they vote, and therefore we get very substandard rulers. He didn't want to replace democracy with a horrid dictatorship, but he wanted to prevent people from voting until they'd started to think rationally. That is, until they'd become philosophers. Otherwise, government would just be a kind of mob rule. To help the process, Plato started a school, the Academy, in Athens, which lasted a good 300 years. There, pupils learned not just maths and spelling, but also how to be good and kind. His ultimate goal was that politicians should become philosophers. The world will not be right, he said, until kings become philosophers or philosophers kings.